We're talking about effective data cleaning and preparation. Okay, and we're gonna be looking at a heart disease data set. I'm gonna give you a moment to look at this. We're gonna talk more about this later. I don't know what your domain knowledge is, so I'm gonna talk about some other things before I come back to this. But this is what we're gonna be ending our day talking about. Just, it could be any clinical data. You know what your domain is, but I really want you to lean in and get this. Such an important part of this, like you got, like I said, even if you don't code, you will be extremely valuable to a data team. You'll see what I'm talking about. So those of you who were here last time, you know about machine learning. When you have a data set like this, the machine says, now what question are you asking me? What do you want me to answer for you? You might say, oh yeah, I wanna know if the patient has heart disease. That's what we call the target variable. You have no say in that. The machine says, oh, that's what you want to learn. Do you have examples of your world? Oh yeah, see this patient has heart disease. This person does, this person does, does, does this patient doesn't. Does, does. Oh yeah, yeah, we have examples of the world. That's how the machine is going to learn. You have no say in the target variable. This is why we do data preparation, to discover better features. You may know them as columns or fields or independent variables, but you want to discover better features because you're bright and you know your domain really well. And, and what would you want to know? Keep in mind, the machine is your surrogate. If you could go out in the world and scale, that's what you have to do. You have to say, to the machine, here's the call I would make on this. Oh, no, no, here's how I would see that. That's your job to tell the machine that. Because the machine is brilliant. You got machine learning is excellent. But it doesn't understand our world. And you'll see that we talk more about that. So you want to either discover better features, better columns, or which columns can I get rid of? Is it noise? And some of you may remember last time, I'm going to say it a lot tonight to emphasize it. Say less. Say less. If you have 12 columns, you can tell the machine in seven columns, tell it in seven. That's hard for people. Some people want to keep everything. Oh, there may be some relationships. I don't want to do that. That's data analytics. Maybe you're creating a dashboard or something. That's not machine learning and data science. Would you want to know that thing? If not, then get rid of it. Okay, you'll see what I mean as we get going here. Now, once you've done that, we're going to come back to this heart disease data set. But like I said, I don't know who has knowledge about this domain, so I'm going to talk about something first. So the machine says, you know what? This is for human eyes. I don't understand any of that. That's for you as you're preparing the data for me. After you've done that, just give me the numbers. Okay, this is what you're going to do. Just give me the numbers. And sitting in between these examples is some machine learning algorithm. Machine learning is not you. The machine's going to learn from your examples of the world. The machine's going to try to learn from these features to predict this target. Okay, I want to make sure that you get this. So when you're giving this to a machine, you're going to give this input. Some of you remember last time, we give the machine some input and an output. The machine learns a relationship. Same thing here. You're going to say, machine, this describes the world. Yeah, this is the person in our world. Yep, that's what I want you to know. And the machine's going to say, oh, so you're telling this patient has heart disease, huh? You're going to say, yep. Okay, let me see. Oh, and this patient doesn't have heart disease. Okay, and that patient doesn't. And that patient does. Okay, the machine's trying to learn a pattern. And so your job, you need to clean and prepare the data so that it can better understand our world. This is your job right here. Can you tell it better things? Okay, the machine's just sitting there waiting for you to find something so it can say, oh, now I see it. There's that one thing that unlock, and it's always there. The machine's waiting for you to see it, and then all of a sudden that model lurches forward. It was hovering at 73, 75, next year it's 89, 92% accurate, because it's that one thing. That one thing. Just make sure that you're muted. I know when you come in, you may not be muted. Thanks. So is that that one thing maybe that the machine doesn't quite understand, uh, uh, that you understand about the world. So here's your take home tonight. Okay, here's the one thing, if you don't take anything else with you tonight, here's what I want you to take with you. Machines don't live in our world. The machine is counting on you to tell about the world. Okay, your job is to describe the world to the machine. If you can remember that, then you'll do well with, with data preparation. Okay, so when we talk about preparation, this is how we communicate to the machine. Okay, if you could scale, we could make a million of you, you would need the machine. But we can't do that. So we need to communicate to the machine. So when we do data preparation, let me tell you about some data types or your features, your columns. Each column, again, this is structured data. Okay, data that's in rows and columns. And some of you working through your certificate, the AIML, Part know that unstructured data is the world of deep learning. That's different. Music and text and tweets and video and all that, that's the world of deep learning and neural networks. We're talking about structured data, which is probably what many of you work with. Data that's in rows and columns, some Excel sheet or something, a, a database table or something. So a column or a feature or a variable or a data, whatever you want to call that column, we want to tell the machine about it. Okay? So if you have numbers, machines understand numbers. 
if you have like 365 days a year, IQ, SAT score, those are discrete, but those are integers. Machines totally get it. If you have continuous values like pi or GPA, machines say, I got it from your decimals. I understand all of that. There's nothing you need to, I got you from here. Okay. Other columns can be categorical. Gender, race, machine says, what in the world is that? I don't read, I don't live in your world. Those are nominal. Those are arbitrary words. If we're the different language, I don't even know what that is. Somehow you're going to have to communicate that concept to me numerically. Okay, so if it's categorical, machine doesn't understand. What in the world is even that? You have to tell the machine what this. So that's going to be your task. And then the other thing the machine wants to know, if there's some order to what your column is telling me about the world, I want to know that. So these are kind of numbers, but not the same numbers that we've applied math to, like first, second, third place. Three, four star, four star, five star restaurant, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. If there's some order, the machine says, you tell me that about your world. Okay, now I'm going to give you a data set here that's different just to get your mental model right, because I don't know if anyone knows about heart disease or what, but after this, hopefully you'll see any data set. I totally see how I should be looking at it. This is a data set I got. Just, I just picked two data sets where everyone should have some general domain knowledge about it. So HR wants to see if things get tricky in the world. You know, we need to lay someone off maybe. I want to, or, or furlough someone. HR may create a model. Can we predict who might be retained or who might be furloughed, let's say? Because the manager might say, am I, I going to lose any of my people? And so we want a model to say, you know, can we predict that? So the machine says, what question are you asking me? What do you want me to learn? And you're going to say, oh, yeah, we want to predict what, would someone be retained or not? That's the target variable. The machine's going to say, do you have examples? Oh, yeah, see, in the past, this person wasn't retained, wasn't, was, was. What machine, can you see the pattern? That's what your job is. And now this is what we need to prepare when we say data preparation. That's all on you now. Okay, so you're going to prepare this so that the machine can understand our world. This is mess. The machine doesn't understand that way it is. So you're going to use these features, not the target. You have no say in these examples. This is just an outcome, assuming it's true. So you have no say in this. This is where you're going to live, right here. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do for your mental model here, for any data set, is feature selection. That's typically the first thing you want to do, knowing your domain. And feature selection says, what can I get rid of? And that's hard for people. If you have a data analytics background, you want to keep everything. Oh, there could be some correlations I'm missing out on. That's not data science machine learning. Say less. Don't ever tell the machine more than it needs to know. Don't tell it any less, but don't tell it more. Okay, so if you can get rid of some, my first thought is I want to get rid of you. If I can get rid of you, I want to get you better. Convince me to keep you because my thought is I want to drop you. I can always pull you back in. But you want to be judicious about what you keep. For example, you know that there's no pattern in employee ID. You wouldn't want to know employee ID. If you were, if you are the person who's going to predict whether someone will get retained, so don't tell the machine it. Driver's license number, social security number, that's noise to the machine. So you say, oh, machine, you know what? No, 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 no. I should have given you employee ID. No, I'm sorry. No, never mind. You don't even need to know that. Okay. Same thing with names. Sometimes people keep names. Names are arbitrarily given to people. Now, unless you know something, but the machine says, I'm trusting you. If you give me name, I'm going to work so hard to find the relationship between name and who's retained. The machine might find a pattern. It's not a spurious relationship. It might say, you know what I discovered? If you have a vowel in the middle of your name, you have a vowel at the end of your name, you're going to be retained. And we know that that's not true. When you put the machine out in the world, that's why it doesn't perform well. You told it something that's not true in the real world. It might accidentally or, or incidentally have learned that in your data set, but you know that's not true. It just could be a pattern that incidentally is in the sample that you're training the machine on. So the machine's trusting you. Okay, so don't give it stuff it doesn't need to know. Okay, the next thing that you're going to do here, just one second, let me unblock my screen here. Okay, so the next thing that you wanna do, now you get to clean your data, you guys. This is, you're going to see me say this a bunch tonight because I just love it because this is art. This is art. You're going to see what I mean. When you write your, if you write your name in cursive, you kind of go, your, your, your A goes this way and maybe my A swirls that way. It's art. It's just creative. You paint this way, I paint that way. You're going to see what I mean. I just love this. I love this because it's so creative and uniquely you. And so all of this that we're talking about, first of all, you're going to clean the data. And so when we clean the data, I like to say we're telling the machine the truth about the world, not just cleaning it. And you'll see the difference in a moment. So the first thing you're going to look at this column, and you're going to say, well, machine's going to look at that column and say, well, I don't know what gender is in your world, but I, I guess you have six of them. Okay, good. I got it. Okay, because you have male and female lowercase. 
female and male sentence case and male and female abbreviate. And she says, okay, six genders, got it. Now, unless that's what you mean to tell the machine, you might want to say, oh, you're not machine. No, 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 no. Let's make them all lowercase. Say what you mean. You have to say what you mean. You have to get in there. You can't say, oh, machine, yeah, we were supposed to go back and clean that. Oh, they didn't drop that. Oh, I thought they were going to drop. No, nope. this is exactly the state of the world when you're done. Because machine learning is excellent. If you say machine, I'm vouching for this data set. This is exactly what I want you to know about the world. You'll be amazed at what machine learning can do if you have enough examples of the world. Okay, so you have to say what you mean. This looks should be fine. We're good here with numbers here. What do we do about race, you guys? How are we going to handle race? Think about this. When the machine looks at this, the machine might say, you know what? I'm finding a nice pattern for Hispanic here. Not quite seeing a pattern for Latino yet. You might say, oh, machine, you know what? No, no, no. Let's make them both Hispanic. Because machines are surrogate. If you see them both as being the same, whether it's Hispanic or Latino, tell the machine that machine can't do that. Because there are differences. For someone else, they may be different. It's art. For someone else, they might say, no, 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 I see them as different. Because they are. Hispanic means you're from a Spanish-speaking country of origin. Latino means you're from Latin America. Central America, South America, the Caribbean. Spain is a Spanish-speaking country, but it's not Latin America. So say what you mean. What do you mean? Are they the same or are they not the same? Otherwise, to the machine, they're different. And if they're not different, it's noise to the machine. Same thing here. The machine might say, ooh, I'm finding a nice pattern for black, not quite seeing enough for African-American yet. Oh, machine. No, 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 no. Make them both black. But that's how you see the world. If there's a distinction without a difference, get rid of it. It's just noise. Only you can do that. The machine does not know. Only you can do that. Okay? Next thing, tenure. We're fine here with tenure. Um, oh, you know what, you guys? I don't think I walked through all Just in case, let me make sure. So in this data set, we have gender, age, race, tenure, their position in the company, their average pay rate, and whether they're going to be retained. I don't think I said that in this study. You can see it, but just to be sure. So here we have tenure in a company, which is fine, but you can't have a missing value. You can't. You can do something with it. Now, if you have a lot of data, you can drop it. Just drop it if you have a lot of data, but you can, maybe it was expensive or, or time-consuming to collect that data. It may be painful just to lose it, just to throw it away. So you may want to replace what we call imputing the missing value. Okay? Now, let me ask someone a question. Don't be shy. Francesca already told you guys, so don't be shy. How would you replace this missing value, anyone? You can unmute yourself, put in the chat. If not, I'll tell you. But I want you to think through this. Otherwise, I'm just talking at you. How would you go about replacing that value? This is you. It's 3 in the morning. You have a presentation to give at 8. What are you going to do? Anybody? Well, I will say, this is where you use your descriptive statistics, you guys. Mean, median, mode any one of those. But here's what I want you guys to see. What a lot of people would do, even though you may not be speaking up, what a lot of you would probably do is say, let me take the mean, let me take the median of this column, maybe. Okay. And I'm going to replace it with that. And that might be reasonable. But remember what I said, your job is to tell the machine the truth. See this girl right here? What if her tenure is missing? You're going to also give her nine. And when you put the machine out in the world, you know what's going to say? You lied to me. You told me someone could be 13 working in the company because if they've been there nine years, they start when they were 13. She says, you lied to me. Your job is to tell me the truth, not just to clean your day. Because some people will say, hey, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow. I've already cleaned the day. Oh, yeah, I cleaned it this afternoon. Yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Your job is not to clean the data. Your job is to tell the machine the truth. Yeah, this is clean in terms of that there's a value there, but it's not the truth. So you might say, give me all females between 20 and 25 who are Hispanic. And they're in position one. Give me maybe the median of those individuals. You'll find it's closer to one or two. Because you want to vouch for the machine. You want to say, you know what, machine? Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, that, yeah, I think that, yep, yeah, I think that reflects our world. There you go. The machine will go do its thing. Okay. Otherwise, that's why your model's performing poor. You didn't tell the machine the truth. You have values there, but it's not the truth. You would you know better that a person 22 wouldn't be in your company in nine years, but that's what you told the machine. Okay. Next thing we have is position in the company. Fine, but we have a missing value. And these look like numbers, you guys, but these are really categories. They're not numbers. Those are categories. If this is a position in a company, I, so I probably can't use mean and median. So maybe I could use mode, if you remember those, the most frequently occurring position here. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to be very specific because I have to tell the machine the truth. I'm going to say, give me all males between 45 and 50 who are white, 
been with the company 15 to 20 years, give me the mode of those individuals. And you'll probably feel it'll probably be much more uh, similar to what the actual value is. And we can also use machine learning. There's other ways to replace missing values. You can use machine learning to predict what that value, because machine can see all of it. And machine can predict based on how it's seeing people similar to this person. So there's other ways to do it, but if you're gonna do it like many people do, by using your descriptive statistics, try to tell the machine the truth. Just say, is that really the truth? Would I be okay with that if someone, yeah. Okay, then you're good. Okay, or if you just totally don't know, drop the row. You'd rather just not have the row than not tell the machine the truth. Okay. Next thing, pay rate, average pay rate in the organization, missing value. Again, we could use mean, median, mode, maybe use mean here, but again, I'd be very specific about this person and then try to re, uh, fill in that value. Okay. And lastly, is retained and we're good there. So you've cleaned your data. You've told the machine the truth. You've gone through everything. You're saying, machine, I vouch for this. I feel pretty good about it. Yep, we took a whole afternoon, and I feel good about this. Okay, This is how much of your time is spent. Machine learning is not you. Most of your time is going to be what we do right now will be 70% of a person's time who's working with data this way. It's your job is to get the data right. Tell the machine so it can do its job. Okay, So the next thing you're going to do, you feel pretty good about this. Congratulations. You cleaned your data. You feel proud. Now, the next thing you're going to do is transform that data into numbers. Because the machine wants numbers. The machine doesn't understand all that other stuff that you're talking about. Okay? So the machine needs numbers. So the next thing you're going to do is go back through your data. You want to transfer your knowledge about the world or, or about the problem to the machine. So if we need numbers here, and I look at this, this looks to be a binary problem. It may not always be a binary problem. So you have to say, what do I want the machine to know about the world? This incidentally looks like a binary problem. So I'm going to say, make the male zero and the females one, just arbitrarily. It's just on or off, this thing or not this thing. That's all the machine knows. The machine doesn't know what gender is or anything else. Just it's going to look for patterns. This thing on or off when the person, whatever it's looking for. Okay. Next thing, these are numbers. We're good. Machines understand these numbers. These are magnitudes. Someone who's 44 is twice as old as someone who's 22. Yeah, those are numbers. I'm good with that. Okay. What are we going to do about race, you guys? I'm going to ask you again. If you want to be shy with me tonight, that's okay. But someone tell me, what are you going to do about race? You, the machine's waiting for you. We need numbers. How are you going to convert race to numbers, somebody? I can see how you guys are going to be tonight. But I'm going to ask you anyway. I won't give up on you. Tell me, somebody. Thank you, Rachel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, but let's all of you guys. I'm looking at the chat. You guys, I'm sorry. I'm calling you guys out. You guys are, are, are helping me out. Thank you. Okay, so here's thank you, Rachel. You guys, here's here's what I want you guys to see. Here's what most people do. Arbitrarily or alphabetically, they'll give race numbers. And they'll say, okay, rate machine has numbers. Okay, let's go machine learning. Go do your thing. But here's the problem. Machines think in terms of magnitude. And the machine's gonna say, Oh, Rachel, so this is the best race. And this is the next ra ra best race, and this is the worst race in your world. Got it. We don't think of race as being ordinal. So keep that in mind if you're going to do that. Is it ordinal? If it's ordinal, I mean, if it's not ordinal, I don't want to put it in order. I'm biasing the machine. I'm telling the machine that this thing is better than that thing. Let me freeze for a second. A lot of people say, well, then why would you do gender this way? When it's binary, you can do that because the machine interprets binaries on or off. But if you have some order, it looks at the magnitude here. Okay, so keep that in mind. There's an, Anyway, I'll come back to this in a moment. Now, let me, remember I said art? Man, you guys, this is art. You might say, no, I'm going to say it is ordinal. Because you might say, the patient has those symptoms and they're that race. Ugh, they have the worst outcomes. This race doesn't do much better. And these seem to skip, this seem to affect them too much. So it is in order. You might say, this is the worst race to be, machine. I just want you to know that. This race isn't much better than these. So you might want to put it in order. You see what I mean? It's art. There are no, there are no always in adverbs. That's why I love it. It's creative. That's how you see the world. Then you can tell the machine that. You might know some stuff that someone else doesn't know. You maybe read a paper or have strong domain knowledge or just have some insight, whatever it might be. And you say, no, I'm going to try. You can always back out of it. You see? So maybe it is ordinal. Okay? So, but in general, if there's no order to it, say, machine, you know what? No, no, no. I'm sorry, machine. I shouldn't have told you that. Nope. This is not ordinal. If it's not ordinal, if you can't put something in order, then we tend to do, there's a few ways to do it, but a common way is one hot encoding. Okay? And one hot encoding says, this column gets dropped and each category gets its own column. And so now you're saying machine, 
the person the person is incidentally this race. I'm not making any claims about degree differences among the races. If you can see a pattern, please do, but I don't want to bias you. So we do one hot encoding. And one hot encoding says if you're Hispanic, you get a one, everything else must be off. If you're Asian, you get a one, everything else must be off. If you're black, you get a one, everything else must be off, etc. Okay, so that's because we don't want we don't want to put it in an order. So we're saying machine, I hope that you can see a pattern here. Okay, so again, if it's not ordinal, you want you want to be thinking this way if your feature is not ordinal. Common mistake, people put it in order in the machine bias in some way. Tenure, I'm fine. There's some order to tenure. Yeah, this person's been there a lot longer than this person. So yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this order. So tenure's fine. What about position? Well, uh, just a second here. We're retaining, retaining, retaining. Yes, thank you. Well, I just saw, I'm just looking here in this message right here. Yes, it, it was up to me. We're going to get to that. It's exactly what we would do. Thank you, you guys. Man, you guys are good. I appreciate you guys. Okay, so for, so for position, you guys, these are numbers. Those are categories. So how do you want to treat them? You have to catch that. Common mistake. You're seeing numbers, but they're not numbers in the real world. Okay, if someone asks you, oh, what's your role to come? You wouldn't say two or seven or my... And so it depends what you mean. So the way we do this, you guys, if this is an entry level position and this is a senior level position, I'm okay with it being in order. Yeah, you go from a one to a two and then a three and then maybe a four. Yeah, I, okay, I'm okay with that being ordinal. But if it's not, maybe it's the same role, but you just work in a different building on campus. Or maybe you work remotely and these people, same role, but just in different cities. Then there is no order. That's when you have to one hot code. Okay, only you can see that. I don't know your data. I don't know what you mean. I don't know that you have to interpret it. Okay, so then you might go one hundred. Go if you're position one, you get a one. Everything else must be off. Position two, one. Everything else must be off. I don't want to put you in order. I don't want to bias the machine to say that position one is better than four or three is better than. No, no, I don't want to do that because they're, they're the same. So I'm going to do one hot encoding. Next thing is pay rate. I'm good with those. There's magnitude differences. I'm okay with pay rate. And as the law just told us, for sure, just like gender. I'm going to convert no to zero and yes to one. Well done, you guys. This is data preparation. This is why the machine needs you, because only you can do this for the machine. The machine doesn't live in the world. The machine is infinitely better than you, because the machine can see a billion rows all at the same time. Assume you've told the machine the truth. Machine learning is excellent, but only you can do this. And each one of you might do something a little bit different. You might interpret it differently and say, oh, I'm going to try this little thing or some, this, this, maybe just this little nuanced thing that you know, just, you don't even know how to explain it to someone, but you, you did some things to tell the machine that. Let me show you what I mean. When you're done with this right here, remember the machine says, I don't read. I don't know what this means. That's for human eyes. Are you done? Okay. Give me the numbers. That's all I need. Put the features in the X, put the target in the Y. And seeing between your examples of the world is going to be some machine learning algorithm. Okay, and you go jump in the shower or take your nap or whatever. It's the machine's turn now. Okay, now look at all this work that you had to do. We're not even done yet. But the machine's going to say, oh, so this is a zero in your world. The machine doesn't know that means, uh, you know, uh, furloughed and this means machine. Oh, so I should predict it close to a zero when I see that, huh? Okay, well, and this should be close to zero. Okay, and I should be, that's what the machine's trying to learn. What's the pattern? Can I see it? Okay, some of you here, were here last time. Paradolia, machine, can you see it? Okay, that's what we're trying to get the machine to see. Okay, now there's one, you could go do machine learning now, but there's one more thing I want to tell you that you can do because you have skills. And here's what you may want to do. It's called feature engineering. To improve your machine learning model, there's two things you can do. Either get more data, more examples of the world. Okay, that's always the first thing I would do. I'd rather have more data than the sexiest hour or anything, more data. That's one thing, or better features. Get in there and tell the machine better things about the world. That's the art of machine learning, the creativity of it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna show you a different data set. So here's a data set we have where we're gonna predict if someone will get admitted into graduate school. They wanna get into their graduate program, okay? And so here we have a person, GRE, graduate record exam, will be predictive of success in graduate school. Their GPA, grade point average, the quality of the university that they're applying from, some will take a test of English as a foreign language, their statement of purpose, how they're gonna change the world and why they wanna work under that advisor and all those things, their letter of recommendation, perhaps that they've gotten from a third party. Have they done any research in their undergraduate program? And then who's been admitted? Remember, give me examples. And the machine's gonna say now, 
I see your data set, but now what question are you asking me? Oh, I want to know if someone will get admitted. That's the target variable. Okay, this is what you get to focus on right here. This is all you right here. Okay, now the machine says this. The machine says, um, don't tell me the same story twice. Don't give me things that are correlated with each other. Don't do that. Okay, so the machine hates that. It's called collinearity. Don't give me features that are highly correlated with each other. It's okay if they're correlated with the target, but not with each other. Don't do that. So you may either visualize in your data or through a correlation matrix, which tells you all the correlation among your variables. And the machine looks here and says, you just told me GPA. Why don't you tell me GRE score? One suggests the other. I know they may be different to you in your world, but they move together. From my point of view as the machine, they move together. One goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. Don't tell me both of those. I don't need to know all of that. Say less. So you're going to get this, oh, machine, you know what? You're right. I am so sorry, machine. You know what? You're right. I know these are highly correlated. Machine, let me fix that for you. So you're going to pull these out. You're going to say, machine, let me tell you a little bit about our world. This is really a performance score, how a person performs. It's a performance score. And so what I'm going to do is maybe so I can get rid of these because I know that they, I know they're highly correlated machine, so I don't need to tell you both of those. I'm telling you the same story, and I know that. I'm sorry. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to take the average of these. This is on a different scale. So maybe I'll multiply GPA times 100, get it on the same scale, and then I'll take the average across. I made that up because it's art. That's my painting. You're going to do differently. But that's the art. That might be the one thing that I needed to do. So now I can drop two columns. Remember, it's in us. OK, so I'm going to say, machine, yeah, so this is really a performance score. You're right. I don't need to tell you both of those. Maybe that's what you need to know about the world. OK, now I could really drop both of these, but I'm going to drop GRE and say, machine, I still need to use GPA. OK, I'm going to get rid of this, but I still need to use it, so I'm going to hold on to it for now. I'm going to say, machine, here's another thing I want you to understand about our world. These two applicants right here, I know you think in terms of magnitude, so they look the same to you, but they're not the same because you have to factor in what university they went to. Okay, that's what people will do. That's what admissions will do. Okay, we have different universities. However, for better or worse, we have different universities, how they're rated. And so you need to factor that in because that's what admissions will do. If you went to a higher rated university than I did, okay, if Malika went to a higher rated university than I did, perhaps her GPA was harder than mine. Maybe her GPA is more powerful than mine. So I'm going to create a new feature called GPA power. And I'm going to say it's the product of these across because that's what admissions will do. So now, machine, you see these two people. No, 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 no. You don't think of them as the same. No, this person went to a little bit better university. So keep that in mind when you're looking at that GPA. OK, and look at these two. Look what she did. Outstanding GPA. Great job. And look at her. Great job, too. But she went to a top university. She should pop. That's what humans are going to do, machine. I want you to know that about the world. So I'm going to create GPA power. Now I can drop GPA. OK, this is your big brain. You came up with those. Only you can do that. OK, now let's say. They started collecting another feature, socioeconomic status, family income. Okay, so now you have family income. So you're excited because you have skills and you're creative and you understand your domain. And you're saying, man, I'm going to make this thing so good. We're right about 89% accurate. I want to get it over 90 so bad. Let me see what I can do to tell the machine a little bit more. What is it missing? Maybe I can improve the model a little bit, even if you don't know the code. You know your domain. Okay, so let me ask you guys. We have socioeconomic status or family income. But we need numbers. Someone tell me, how are you going to convert these in numbers? What are you going to do? I even asked her, you know what I love about what she said? She justified her position. That's what you have to do. It's art. I said one because one is low, but she said, no, three is heavier on me. I have a heavy load on me. Life was hard on me. Or, man, I'm trying to make it. I love that. Whatever you can justify. You see what I mean? You get in there. There's no always and never. Don't let anyone tell you, oh, well, what do you want? No, you know your domain. And I love what she said here. I would make this ordinal. I'd say you go from low income, middle income to high income. If it weren't order, because someone might say, well, I don't see these as ordered. I think then if they weren't, then you would want hunt and code. OK, but I'm going to say these are ordinal. Okay, I put one, two, three, but I love what just Sophia said. She said, no, 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 no. And I might try the other way. Machine doesn't really care as long as in order. OK, so it doesn't really matter that much. Let me tell you a nuance that I love what Sophia said. Let me tell you a nuance that, that you could do here. See how we did one, two, and three? Can anyone think of another way to encode that to tell the machine what Sophia said? That maybe things are hard on me. And so I'm telling the machine they're equidistant. What, can anyone think of another way to encode these? Anyone? Well, let me tell you. 
because I love what Sophia said. You might say, you know, you you not that life is easy if you come from a high income family. Everyone has stress. But let's say your light is lower, it, your 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 light is less. So let's say we give you a one if you're from a high income family, right? A middle income family, you might say it's not equal to this. You don't go low, middle, high. You might go low. I mean, you might say high income is a one. Maybe middle income is a five, and maybe low income is a twenty. That's why I like what Sophia said. I'm trying to tell the machine about a hardship. And that this is a this is way far away, machine. If your low income life is much harder, not just one step to get to this one, and then another. No, it could be ten steps away to get from low income to become middle class, and maybe five to go from. I don't know what it is, but it's art. See what I mean? I love how she justified her position. She said, "No, three. To, it's three to me." Now she's going to use three, and I love that. And I love that she even justified it. So keep that in mind. So I went one, two, and three. It doesn't matter so much. So we just created a new feature here. Now. Uh, um, Using that, I'm going to create a feature called grit. It's related kind of what Sophia said. And the reason I came up with grit, you'll come up with something else, because I believe it may be related to success in school. Because grit is real, but it's hard to quantify. You guys know people with grit. Some people aren't going to quit no matter what. If it takes me eight years to get my degree, it just takes me eight years. I'm not quitting. Single mother out there taking those kids to school, drops them off, goes over to her school, takes a nap in the parking lot, gets up and goes to her class. She can crawl back in bed. That's grit. Some people have grit. And I don't know why some people, have, I don't know if it's in the blood, the DNA, birth order, life circumstance, but I know it's real. And I want to tell the machine about that, that about the world. Some people have grit. And so here's what I'm trying to do. Can anyone tell me, I'm going to use these, can anyone tell me here what I might be trying to tell the machine using these two columns? If not, I'll tell you. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell the machine. I'm trying to say, if you start off with a disadvantage in life and you were able to get into a top university, you might have grit and that might matter. While everyone else is going home, you are going to your second job. And it's perseverance, sticking with your future. I want the machine to know that about you or about the person, whoever it is. I want the machine to know that. So I'm dividing socioeconomic status. It's so, so well said is dividing this in here. And I'm going to call that grit. What was once a disadvantage can become an advantage for a person. OK, now the thing is, I don't want a person penalized if they had an advantage in life. They went to a lower rated university. There's a lot of reasons you could do that. OK, maybe your parents went there, your boyfriend or girlfriend went there. It's close to home or work. There's a lot of so, so we'll have to work that out. But my, I do want to say if you had a disadvantage, and you were to climb and get here. I want to know about you. I think that's going to matter. OK, now you perhaps might decide and this is going to be it's art. You have to determine. I'm going to say I'm going to get rid of socioeconomic status. I want to let grit stay. Maybe I don't need that anymore. I'm, I want to say less. I can always pull it back in. But I want to say less. I'm always thinking what I can get rid of. I'm going to let grit stand on its own. I appreciated it, but I'm going to use it as grit instead. I think grit's going to tell the machine a little bit more. Okay, so now this is your data set. You're going to separate out the target variable. The machine's going to say, just give me the numbers, put the features into X, put the target into Y, and some machine learning algorithms going to learn about your data. Now, Sophia and I, our model knows about performance score. Our model knows about GPA power. Our model knows about grit. And if you didn't tell your model that your machine doesn't get to know about that, that's the art of machine learning. Okay? We all get the same data, but we don't all have the same data. Because Sophia's doing some stuff with her data that maybe you're not doing. She sees the world different, differently. She knows her stuff. So she's getting in there. She's not going to just, uh, just clean her data. She's going to tell the machine the truth. And she's going to tell the, the nuances about the world. You're going to want to know this. And I think you also may want to know this. Okay, that I, you know, I'm just telling you, this is how I would do it, machine. I, I think you're going to, yeah, look over here. Make sure you look at, don't miss this thing. And that's what Sophie, and so that's what her model gets to know. And if you didn't think of that, how in the world, she, she's just killing us. We've been working on this problem for three months. Okay, that's what I want you guys to know, that it's so unique. Now, having said that, okay, so I'm going to try to wind up if we can in the next 10 minutes. Having said that, I think we're ready to talk about heart disease now, whether you have domain knowledge or not. Okay, hope you now have a good mental model of data preparation. Okay, so now here's a heart disease data set. Let's talk about this. So this is you. This can be any data set. This is you. You're excited. You sit down in front of your computer or whatever. You or maybe you're looking over the shoulder of someone who's going to be doing the coding or whatever. But you, it's, it's your. But you have the domain knowledge. They need you. So here we are. We're looking at your data. Okay, so we're looking at heart. We're trying to predict a patient's heart disease. Now that's the model. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, we have a patient's age. Okay, we have the sex of the patient. We have the type of chest pain, angina that the patient has. We have the resting blood pressure. 
the diastolic pressure, we have their total cholesterol, we have their maximum heart rate achieved, we have whether they, they have high fasting blood sugar or not, we have, we have whether they have exercise-induced angina, do they get chest pain when, when from exercising, do they have that present, and then uh, uh, the presence or absence of heart disease, that's your data set, okay? The machine is going to say, now, what do you want me to predict? You might think that's silly that I keep saying that, but maybe you want to predict chest pain. You want to predict the person's sex. Maybe you can predict anything. Machine doesn't know. So I'm going to say, oh, no, no, machine, you want to predict the patient's heart disease. This is your canvas. Just like Sophia was doing, this is your canvas. Cleaning, preparing, feature engineering, that's what you get to do. Now, we'll assume the data is already clean. Let's assume this data is already clean. Okay? So if it's already clean, Maybe another team data, we're going to get data clean. Maybe an intern helped or another team does the cleaning, then it comes to you because you're the domain knowledge, okay? So the data's clean. Okay, there you go. So you walk in. Okay, now what I need to do is transform the data because machines want numbers. So let me see. Let's see what we're going to do here. So now let's look here, okay? So first feature is age. You have numbers there, so you're good. You're good with numbers. But again, don't settle if you know something about your day. You might say, I was reading the paper the other day, and did you know, you might know that there's certain decades, or maybe every 25 years, you might say the paper was saying somewhere between this age and that age, and then things really take off between this and that, the, the, the risk really uh, exponentially increases. So you might know some things. So I played around with this, and I'll show you in a moment in code. Instead of just taking age, age is fine. It's continuous or an interval variable, it doesn't matter. But I said, you know what? What if I created age groups for the machine? and separated people by decades. Maybe I know something. Maybe the paper told me. Okay, maybe in between 27 and 43, the paper said. And I'll say, the machine, uh -uh, machine, I want you to pay attention to this. You know, maybe you have some insight. Maybe there's a study you're doing that you want to pull into this or something and, and test it out. Does that, does it actually help predict heart disease? Okay, so you can group these in some way, whatever creative way you want to encode this. I'm going to go back to age, but just keep in mind, this is your creativity. This is your canvas. You do whatever's gonna make the machine better understand the world. So I'm gonna go back to age here, okay? Sex right here, we can convert these to numbers so we can convert females to one, males to zero. Hopefully you guys know that. Let me ask somebody, ooh, I ran into a robot. What am I doing with chest pain? What do you guys think? Okay, now you guys, you may know something different, okay? Jeffrey's saying one thing, but you may, you might say, oh, no, no, no. From my research, this is worse, and then this, and then that. You may know it's ordinal. I can't say it's ordinal. I don't think it's ordinal, but if you think it's ordinal because you know some stuff, or maybe in your experience with patients, you may want to put it in order because you say, no, no, no. When I'm seeing patients, I totally can see it in my mind's eye. When I'm sitting down with a patient or whatever, nope, there's a definite, a clear order to me. If there's not, then you're going to one-hot encode it. Excellent. See, there's no clear order there to me. I don't want to bias the machine. One hot code. You have typical angina pain. And I should have told you there are four different. There's typical angina, there's asymptomatic, atypical angina, and non-angina pain. You don't have to know what those mean. You just know that there's four categories. And if you, again, when in doubt, if you can't put them in an order, either ask a domain expert or one hot code them. Otherwise, you're going to bias the machine. Okay? Resting blood pressure. Numbers. We're good. Cholesterol. Numbers. Max heart rate. Numbers. We're good. Whether someone has high uh, fasting blood sugar, Zero for false, maybe one for true. They're arbitrary. It doesn't have to be that, but, but, but typically we do one for true. The machine interprets true as one. Um, if it's true and false, too, we definitely will go zero and one. But if it's binary like sex, it's arbitrary. We make the males one or the females one. That doesn't matter. Uh, anginal pain, I mean, uh, whether exercise induced angina, false is zero, true is one. And then the presence of uh, heart disease. Yes, we can convert to one, and zero, we can co uh, convert to false or zero would be no, okay? You've transformed your data. Congratulations, you see it, you totally get what the machine needs from you. Now you can go do machine learning now, the machine's ready for this, but you have skills. And the next thing you're gonna do, you say, wait, 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 no, 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 you guys just, no, no, you guys go and go home, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna stay a little bit, I'm gonna work on this, I'll see you guys in the morning, because you're gonna do your feature engineering, because you know some things. So you're gonna say, you know about this. This is when you can bring your domain knowledge and your creativity to the data set. The best, this is what's uniquely you in this. So you, this is just a call you made. I just love this part of it because you want to better describe the world to the machine. So you're going to go in here and say, well, let me see if there's something else I can do. Oh man, let me see. Does anyone have any suggestions? I don't, I don't know if you guys have any domain knowledge. If not, I'll tell you what I was playing around with. Anyone have any suggestions for feature engineering for heart disease? I don't know if anyone has any 
just general knowledge or just living in the world, just a guess, or maybe someone here works with heart disease data sets? Anyone? See, that would be an insight for the machine because you're good here. Most teams are good and they're, they're, they're giving it to the machine and they're done. But you say, no, 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 maybe there's some stuff I know that the machine doesn't know. Is there something else that you could do with these features, just some nuance about the world? The machine doesn't live in the world. So you have to tell the machine, here's how our world works. So anything you or anyone can see, just say, you know what I might play around with? Anyone? One, those are called interactions. And I love that. She's saying, wait, machine, you may not know this, but the sexes are different. The physiology is different. And I want you to know that. Their response to different levels of cholesterol or, or weight gain or, or lipids or whatever it might be, their response is different. And you might want to tell the machine, so I'm, I'm not telling you there's no right or wrong. I just want you to think about it. You, I'd love this if they jump, even though she said, I don't know a thing about this, but I do get feature engineering. And she says, I do live in the world. I do know that the sexes are different and that might matter. Okay, here's what I played around with. I said, you know what? I want to look at cholesterol and max heart rate because I'm saying th this interaction between these two might indicate the total load on the heart. If you have a, a high max heart rate and high cholesterol, that might be a high load on the heart. Okay, I'm making that, that's, that's art, okay? Because I can always bring it in and pull it back. And so I'm going to create a feature that's this interaction between these two, not just one, but both of them. They interact and it's hidden unless you look at the interaction. And so I'm just going to take it the product across and just use this interaction. I like that. I'm going to say that because I live in the world. I mean, she doesn't know anything about a load on the heart or whether that even matters. Is it better to have a low heart rate, max heart rate? What's cholesterol anyway? It knows nothing, but you do. So you say, oh, machine, look over here. Look over here. And the machine, in some ways, say, well, wouldn't the machine see it anyway? Not necessarily. She might, might not. It's just like I can look at the way you, here's how I think of it in my head. Because some people say, well, why do I do that? The machine can figure it out on its own. But I could probably look at the way you dress, maybe the car you drive, and guess how much money you make. Or you could just tell me. And that's why I'm just telling the machine, machine, don't miss this. I don't know if you'll see it or not, but don't miss it. So that's one reason I do this. The other reason I do it is to say less. Now that I've done that, I'm going to drop cholesterol. And get rid of that. I kept max heart rate because as I looked at the correlations, max, max heart rate had a, had a high influence on heart disease independent of this interaction. And so I kept max heart rate. You'll play around and you'll, maybe you can always pull it back in. You say, oh man, I blew it. Let me see what happens if I pull cholesterol back in. So it's not forever. Okay. This is just you trying, try, trying to, just kind of iterating over your data. Okay. So that's the first feature I did. The next thing I said, you know what? High fasting blood sugar and exercise induced in general are risk factors. That's what they are. So I said, what if I create a column called risk score? In other words, do you have zero, one, or both of these? And it's just the sum across. That's what I did. I said, it's really what I care about is a risk score. And so now I decide to drop both of these, say less. So again, I'm trying to see what can I get rid of? You can always pull something back in. Okay, so I won't continue because each of you will have your own domain and you'll try something. I like what Sophia did. I could kind of riff on that a little bit. Okay, let's look at the influence of the, and That's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to spend your afternoon doing. That's how you go from a good model to a great model. Cleaning your data, telling the machine the truth, and then looking at the nuances and the interactions and how do I see the world? Like she's, the machine doesn't really think about the sex as being different, she does. So she said, how can I emphasize that point to the machine? Let me see. And then it's a dinner, I might be able to drop something, you know, if I do that, okay? So now that we've done this, now your data is prepared and ready for machine learning. All of your insight, all the choices you made are right here. And the machine said, just give me the numbers. Okay, put the features in the X, put the target in the Y, and sitting between your examples of the world with some machine learning algorithm. Machine, can you see what heart disease looks like? Because machine can see all of it. Machine's brilliant. Machine can machine see all your patients, whether it's 100 or 100,000, whatever it is in your data set, machine can see all of it. You can't do that. But you can tell the machine the truth about the world. Describe the world to the machine. Okay, so we have a few minutes here, you guys. I'm going to keep my promise. I'm going to stick around for a quarter, but let me show you this in a notebook. I always like to do this. You may not know any coding, so don't be intimidated by this. If you're working through your certificate, the, the data ocean certificate, you'll get comfortable with Python, and this is Pandas. This is the library if you're working with structured data in Python. Okay, you don't need to know coding. I'm just going to show you in a notebook, so you say, "Oh man, I can, I totally can do this. This is so me." Okay, it's not Python's human readable. It's not a thing, but you might not be coding anyway. You might be playing around with it, maybe in Excel and passing it on to someone else. It's your domain knowledge. It's your understanding of, 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 of biomedical data science, which, which is the, the skill that you have. It may not even be the coding. I think it's always good to code, but again, don't be intimidated. So here's the data set that we've been working through. Okay, here's Sophia. Midnight, she's going to do this thing. She's not going to bed until she gets this thing right. So here's her data set. 
Now, the first thing noticed, ah, these aren't numbers. These aren't numbers. These aren't numbers and these aren't numbers. So she knows she needs to fix that. So we're going to do our transformation. Don't worry about the code. So what she did is she converted uh, the sex to numbers, fast, all those things that we did earlier. The only thing, and then chest pain, because it wasn't ordinal, it's one hot encoded. Okay, the machine will do that for you. Okay, so now I feel pretty good about my data. Notice one thing that I did. I group, I created a feature called age groups. And I just said, if you're under 40, I just say, hey, machine, look over here. And then if you're in your 50s, 60, 70, I just kind of bend in there. I'm just playing around. So I chose age groups. I'm going to drop age. I can always pull it back in. So you have this feature called age group. I broke it up by decades. Then you'll do something creative because you're going to know some stuff. Okay, maybe it's not by decades. Maybe it's up to 79 and a half from 54. You, maybe you're, you're going to know some stuff that you want to want to tell the machine. And you want to just say, let me just try that and see if that is a signal that the machine picks up on. Okay, so I'm going to drop age, although I probably in the real world might keep it. But I, this is what I would do. I'd be going back and forth trying. Ah, that didn't make a difference like I thought. Okay, well, I'll drop that and go back to age. So you're just going to iterate. So I'm looking at my data. Ooh, 745 patients. Okay, that's pretty good. Here's, now you're going to do some features. Now you're going to do machine learning from here. You're good. Or you can go ahead and say, you know what? I think I know a little bit more. I think machine, I think I can tell you a little bit more. Here's that, the, 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 well, this interaction I was looking at. Uh, cholesterol to max heart rate. I don't know if that's going to be a thing, but I'm, but I, I suspect it might be. And so that's feature engineering. Remember this higher overall cardiovascular load. I think that might be a thing, machine. So I create a feature. Remember these risk factors? I call that risk score. Do you have zero of them, one of them, two of them? I think you're going to want to know that, machine. And then I can drop these two. And now I dropped fasting sugar. I dropped angina, chest pain. I dropped cholesterol. And I dropped age because I'm going to stay with age group. Okay, you might decide to drop age group and go back to age again. You, the point is that's that's going to be your process. You're going to iterate back and forth and back until you find something that works for you. Okay, now put the features into X, put the target into Y. Here's your answer key. Some of you know from last time, separate your data into training and test sets, and then go go to the park, take the kids to the park, go to the gym, and it's the machine's turn. If you've told the machine that they look at this, you don't even have to know what these uh, uh, algorithms are. We'll talk about some of these later. But you don't need to know the algorithm because it's not you. People have gone long before you've written these algorithms. Everyone's using the same algorithm. It's not like you need to. So you're going to say, oh, I want to try logistic regression. There's some choice. One might be better than another for a different reason. But you're going to probably just choose one from each family. So in this data set, oh, I was 79% accurate on the data for logistic regression. I was 84% accurate predicting whether someone will have heart disease. Random forest, 100% accurate. Now, this is on the training set. It won't be as accurate on the test set. I didn't want to take the time to go through all of that. And then Kenya some neighbors, which is a different album, 82% accurate. And so what you'll do, you'll choose, you'll run one from each family, and whichever one performs best, that'll be the model that you put out in the world, or that you're going to run your patients through in, in your lab, or that you'll deploy on a phone or for other physicians to you, whatever it might be. That'll be the one you choose this time. Probably will be a different one next time. There's no one best algorithm. They're all just different. They all see the data differently. Okay. And so I have about four minutes, you guys. So I'm going to leave it open for questions, you guys. So if anyone has questions, I know that's a lot. But the main thing I want you to take away is, man, whether you code or not, you can see how why they need you on that team to clean your data, to convert it to numbers, and then to do feature engineering. That is probably one of the biggest parts of machine learning. It's the human part. The other part, you're handing over to the machine. The machine's going to go run with it and see if it sees patterns. There's other things you can do. You can tune the model in here and maybe you want to bring in some other features. If you guys notice up here, I had many other features here. We had some resting EKG and we had coronary art. Wave, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to overwhelm you with all these features. And so as I pulled these features in right here, it's about 99% accurate. But I didn't want to pull all, you know, I'd try to explain what all these things are if you don't have domain knowledge and have to have 15 features to wade through. So the point is, if you can get additional columns, or more rows, that's another way that you can improve your model. Okay? So with that, you guys, I'm going to open up for if you guys have any questions. I'm going to hang back if you guys have questions, whether it's about this, about machine learning last time, about working through your certificate in SDO, or if it's about whatever you want to chat about, I'm going to stick around, uh, you know, for the next, for as long, at least for the, as long as anyone's here to ask questions, I'm going to stick around. So thank you guys. So if you have questions, I'm going to open it up for questions for you.